Hey man, got something pretty cool to show you guys today. This is a variable unloading array system. What it does is that it takes shulker box splitter outputs and starts to group them, then unload them in a way where only one specific item type is being unloaded at any given time. So if I were to demonstrate that, we have the shulker box splitters output. Uh, thanks to Hikate and Melon Tech member Barcelona for showing me this really cool clock. If I activate it, it will start key genning the items which will go into these variable sorters. I will talk a bit more about these variable sorters in a different video. But as you can see, it is starting to group up the items. Uh, probably not in that one. Yep, there we go. And then it's unloading. Each one of these uh, unloaders is 2 y tileable and you can fit 16 of them in a single chunk while they also work with 16 and 64 stacks. We have the item gate controlled by this upper clock timer here and we align the items and that allows us to fully utilize the sorters within a normal storage system ensuring that you are using these special sorters and if you're not then batch the items a bit more quicker but yes very cool very nice so a single slice of these unloaders look like this we are able to lock the actual sorting mechanism so the entire uh, unloading array doesn't operate or gets new items basically when we have a, a lock simple reset whenever it does have items mapped and we wanted to reset it in slice overflow meaning these buffers over here get filled with uh, boxes we can detect that we have the batching signal where we tell it to drop its items and we are able to tell whether it is actually unloading and not do things when it is unloading. Where this entire array shines is when we have more item types to unload than actual unloaders. So right now I've manually locked everything except for two unloaders and there are nine item types. The best way to consider, I mean, think how this system works is these outputs from shulker box splitters will be in a silo before you actually put them in here and you can consider this an entire batch of items that we want to sort. So if I were to do that and do that, it will now go through what's called a cycle where it will first pass all the boxes through the system and these two unloaders will remove two. As you can see, they are mapped there. Now we do detect when the last item comes through from this uh, entire array and when we do we will reset the system and overflow items will go all the way to this very special bulk which I'll talk about more later. And right now with the reset of the slices over here and the new input of the items coming through you can consider that the second cycle in phase um, with new item types. We are able to detect when a slice is full, when these buffers over here get, get too full, and when that happens, this will activate. And basically what that does is that it will lock every single uh, array, it will turn off the distribution of boxes, and more importantly, it will cancel the reset cycle for the boxes here. Now, if you were to check this out, Oh, not there. Yep, we have two different other types in a single unloader. That's perfectly fine because these unloaders are designed to unload a single item type at any given time. Uh, even so long as two modules don't have don't share the same item type, then it's done its job and this is what it's doing. So it's perfectly fine to, to have multiple item types. Now, when the overflow is detected to a finish we can start the or continue the cycle so if we have two unloaders and nine iron pipes in a single batch then it would take five cycles to finish this system 
Now the only exception is when we do have an overflow, where it will have to do an additional cycle to uh, make sure that we do not remap different modules with the same item type. I guess I'll talk about this now. This is the very special bulk. It's a batch-wise uh, bulk silo system. It uses the concept of when one silo is active, the other one is interlocked in a way where if we are taking items out from one, we can't take items out from the other. And the exact opposite is true when we are putting items in. So if you were to look at where the positions of these two systems are, if I activate it, it'll swap around. Activate it again, swap around. This is a very crucial bulk when using these sorts of searches or variable sorters. Um, this will also be required to be your intermediate buffer storage for the sugar box splitters to this actual array system. But other than that, not sure what else to talk about. So yeah, 